independent of matter. The infinite nature of mathematical truth also implies an independence from matter. Our observable universe has an information capacity of 10 to the power of 120 bits. This number is large, but finite. Nowhere in physics, is there room to store, represent, or hold the infinite true statements of mathematics. If there are infinite primes, infinite factors of zero, infinite digits of pi, they don't exist physically. If these infinite properties don't and can't depend on physical processes operating within a material universe, it follows that mathematical properties must exist independently of matter. Quote. It is our firm belief that the Pythagorean theorem needs not be created, nor the fact that the circumference of a circle is 3.14, and so on, times the diameter. The laws of nature and the collection of truths, values and their interrelations are primordial, and have always existed. C. W. Ryatijkin Four-Dimensional Reality Continued, 2018 Is it the cause? For this story to work, abstract objects, truth, numbers, equations and so on, must play a causal role in generating reality and perceptions. The default position of philosophers has been that abstract objects have no effects, they cause and do nothing. But we must admit that this has always been an assumption, it's never been proven. Quote. Although philosophers deny that abstract objects can have causal effects on concrete objects, abstract objects are often defined as causally inert, their potential, say as a collective, to be an explanatory source of ultimate reality cannot be logically excluded. End quote. John A. Leslie and Robert Lawrence Kuhn in The Mystery of Existence, 2013 Recent advances in mathematics give us pause. The discovery that all computations exist as a consequence of mathematical truth, makes us wonder whether abstract mathematics is really so ineffectual. But can mind or matter really be created by math? The Cause of Minds Consciousness remains one of humanity's last great mysteries. While science has not settled the question of what consciousness is, it has progressed by developing a testable theory of consciousness. In the 1600s, thinkers such as René Descartes and Thomas Hobbes advanced the idea of mechanism, the theory that our brains and bodies are machines that operate according to mechanical rules. In 1936, the discovery of universal machines, or computers, led to the church Turing thesis, which says the behavior of any finite machine can be perfectly replicated by an appropriately programmed computer. This is their special power. It is what makes computers so useful. Without changing your computer's hardware, it is able to run any one of the millions of applications available to it, including applications not yet developed or conceived of. Each new application provides the computer with new functionality and behaviors. Some were quick to recognize the implications of the church Turing thesis for theories of minds, brains, and consciousness. The two fathers of computing, Alan Turing and John von Neumann, noticed parallels between computers and the mind. In 1948, Turing wrote the first chess-playing program and in his 1950 paper Computing Machinery and Intelligence, Turing asked, Can machines think? The last work of John von Neumann was a lecture series, The Computer and the Brain, published posthumously in 1958. In it von Neumann explains that it is not that the brain acts like a computer, but that computers are so varied in what they can do, that they can be set up to imitate any machine, presumably even the human brain. Quote. The important result of Turing's is that in this way the first, universal, machine can be caused to imitate the behavior of any other machine. John von Neumann in The Computer and the Brain, 1958. In the 1960s and 1970s, philosophers of mind including Hilary Putnam, and his student Jerry Fodor developed what they call functionalism. In its digital form, functionalism is known as the computational theory of mind, or computationalism. This is the idea that function, or computation, 
is the foundation of consciousness. The computational theory of mind remains as the most popular theory for consciousness among scientists and philosophers. Quote, Computationalism, or digital mechanism, or simply mechanism, is a hypothesis in the cognitive science according to which we can be emulated by a computer without changing our private subjective feeling. Bruno Marshall in the Computationalist Reformulation of the Mind-Body Problem, 2013. If the computational theory of mind is true, then mathematics can explain where observers come from. Observers would be found among the infinite computational histories within arithmetical truth. See, what is consciousness? And can a machine be conscious? Recent discoveries in physics lend support to computationalism. In 1981, Jacob Bekenstein discovered a physical limit now known as the Bekenstein bound. This bound says that a physical system of finite mass and volume can contain, at most, a finite amount of information. This applies to any finite physical system, a brain, the Earth, the solar system, our galaxy, or the observable universe. Given that the observable universe has a finite mass and volume, it follows by the Bekenstein bound that it has a finite description. Given that it is a finite description, it follows by the Church-Turing thesis that the evolution of the observable universe is something that is perfectly replicated by a certain computer program. This program contains a version of you, me, the Earth and everyone and everything present in our universe. Our shared histories and memories would be identical. But the question remains, are these computational doppelgangers conscious like we are? If we inspected the contents of this computer program, we would find analogues of all the objects of our own universe. We would find the same books, articles, and movies. Among these we would even find many works on the mysterious nature of consciousness. These same books will also appear in a purely computational version of our universe, written by computational authors, who apparently are just as baffled by their conscious experiences as we are. If these purely computational versions of us are not conscious, what drives them to write and read books about consciousness? If, on the other hand, they are just as conscious as we are, then the idea of a separately existing physical reality becomes redundant. In that case, for all we know, we are these computational versions. We would then exist as pure computations. We would inhabit the computational histories of simulated realities that exist only as a consequence of mathematical truth concerning universal equations. Every imaginable computation is realized in arithmetic as true relations about these universal equations. This includes the computations that describe you, your environment, and even the evolving state of your brain as it processes this very sentence. If computationalism is right, this is who we are. Quote, we'll explore the fascinating relations between computation, mathematics, physics and mind, and explore a crazy-sounding belief of mind that our physical world not only is described by mathematics, but that it is mathematics, making us self-aware parts of a giant mathematical object. Max Tegmark in Our Mathematical Universe, 2014 The Cause of Matter Can mathematical truth with its inherent infinite collection of computational histories, explain matter, physical laws and universes. How can abstract things, like truth, numbers, computations, give rise to concrete things like chairs, bricks, and houses? What's the difference between abstract existence versus concrete existence? Some say the difference is only a matter of perspective. To a being who inhabits an abstract object, be it an abstract mathematical object or abstractly existing computation, it seems concrete to them. Quote. This equivalence between physical and mathematical existence means that if a mathematical structure contains a self-aware substructure, it will perceive itself as existing in a physically real world, just as we do. End quote. Max Tegmark in the Mathematical Universe, 2007. 
The relative aspect of concrete existence, is explicit in Marcus Muller's definition of physical existence. Quote, Given two objects A and B, we say that they physically exist for each other if and only if, under certain auxiliary conditions, modifying the state of A will affect the state of B, and vice versa. Marcus Muller in Could the Physical World Be Emergent Instead of Fundamental, and Why Should We Ask? 2017. Whenever a conscious observer experiences or interacts with another object, that object appears concrete to that observer, even if, from another point of view, both that observer and object seem abstract. Of the modes of existence, this understanding implies mind over matter. Math produces an infinity of conscious minds, and the perceptions of these minds include experiences of material realities. Computationalism, together with the mathematical existence of all computations, leads to a causal reversal between mind and matter. Quote, what results is not a primitive matter with consciousness emerging from its organization but the reverse. Consciousness is now the more primitive and matter, or rather the appearance of material organization, emerges from all the possible experiences of all the possible consciousnesses. End quote. Bruno Marshall in The Amoeba's Secret, 2014. Matter is then, as Plotinus supposed, a phantasm.